Generational curses. Now that's a topic that's very controversial. Are generational curses for today? Or is this something that was left behind back in the Old Testament? Well, fortunately for you guys, you guys are going to see a bit of a debate that we had in a group chat, which Corey from Smart Christian started, where we had this discussion. The participants in the conversation were Pastor Marcus Rogers, Rabbi Eduardo, myself, and obviously Smart Christian's channel. Although Prophet Abednego and Pastor Pragani were in the group chat, they did not participate. I was able to talk to Pastor Pragani and ask him about his views, which are common knowledge, and he wrote about it in his book. So I'll share that accordingly. So the conversation started off like this. Corey sends us a text message, the group chat, obviously, and he goes, Good afternoon. I hope all is well. I have been wrestling with the issue of generational curses and would love for you or anyone to clarify for me how generational curses exist post cross. It is not my goal to go after anyone, but to simply see if or where I may be missing something. I've included a recent video asking to be shown my error. I think that the issue is extremely important, whether this is biblical or not to the lives of Christ followers. I send this with the best of intentions, hoping to get a response and an understanding. Prove generational curses? Question mark. So as soon as I saw that text message, I responded and said this. I believe that if I become a fornicator and get AIDS and have a child, now that child will also have AIDS and he suffered a curse that I passed down to him, which was AIDS. That's what I believe in regard to the topic, but I don't know what everyone else believes. Rabbi Eduardo responds and says, for me, kind of like how if one chooses to drink and they become an alcoholic, they could pass on a greater chance of their child becoming an alcoholic. So Marcus Rogers comes in the conversation and puts in his input, and he says, I agree with JP. I think sometimes people try to make it like this spooky thing. But that is one of the best examples that he just gave. The Bible clearly says, give no place to the devil, and that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. This is why we see alcoholism can seem generational. I respond by saying, if I become a cocaine addict, my child will have cocaine blood. I agree with Marcus. Now I know my examples are a little extreme. I mean, cocaine and AIDS... But the reason I brought those examples up was to showcase that there's something I can do that future generations can get impacted by. And I believe Radar and Marcus Rogers, Radar being Rabbi Eduardo, he goes by Radar, are on the same page with that. There are things we can do that future generations can get impacted by. And obviously my examples were a little extreme, but you get the point. So Marcus Rogers says, when we sow to the flesh, we reap corruption and destruction, and those things can be passed on to our children in the same way if we sow good things. To me, it's more of a principle of Scripture. If I obey Scripture and teach my kids, then they will see good fruit. If I disobey Scripture, I will see bad fruit. Curses. He continues on to say, Lastly, I was reading the other day about how we woe to them that call good evil and evil good and bitter sweet and sweet bitter. It goes on to talk about how they will be rotten to their roots. Well, if the roots are rotten, then the fruit will be rotten. And I think sometimes folks just try to over spiritualize what a curse can look like. When the people chose Barabbas over Jesus, they said, let his blood be on our children and our children's children. That's a curse. Corey responds and says, you're all describing consequences rather than curses. But where do scriptures teach the following generations will be cursed? Presumably by God for their father's sin after the cross. So Rabbi responds by giving this verse and he says, you shall not worship them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting the punishment of the fathers on the children, even on the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, 
but showing favor to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. I say the word curse can be supernatural, but it can also be a form of punishment inflicted on someone. So if I get AIDS for being a fornicator and my son has it, he was cursed. And if my son has a son, his son will also have AIDS. All the generations will have AIDS. Remember a little earlier, Marcus Rogers said, let's not over spiritualize this. Well, Corey responded to that and then we had a back and forth. Corey said, it's not over spiritualizing. It's being honest with the text and not exceeding what is written. How is a man set free, but then placed under a curse? And then I responded and said, I think one can be under a curse of disbelief. For example, if I turn away from Christ and have kids, they will also be turned away from Christ and will be cursed in the sense that they don't have salvation. So Corey responds, of course, and he says, Rabbi and JP, I get the generational curses that were given to Israel by God, but those sins are not revisited or accredited their sons Jeremiah 31 and Ezekiel 18. So then I ask, what do you mean by curse? I showed you examples of what I mean by curse. Corey responds and says, if generational curses were an actual thing after salvation, isn't it odd that no one mentions it? Peter, Paul, John, etc. I said, do you believe the fall of Adam was a generational curse to mankind? Corey says, JP, the word curse means to be loft, lightly esteemed, etc. and treated that way. The question is, does God do that to others because of their father's sin? Corey says, the fall of Adam is not a generational curse. If so, who is the curse on? All of mankind? If so, then why will some people not taste physical death? I said, I believe some will not taste physical death because they will be raptured. Marcus gives his input and says, if I sow to the spirit instead of the flesh and I follow biblical principles like honor your mother and father, that it may be well with you, those principles produce blessings and favor that is supernatural. In the same way that if I go against those principles, I will reap destruction and calamity. Curses. If the son has made you free indeed, but you can be under a curse, then Jesus has some explaining to do. Don't you think? I guess it depends on how you look at a curse. I responded and said, Who the Son sets free is free indeed, but we must remain free. Being free is a choice we have to make. If someone frees me from prison, and then I commit crimes again, I won't be free. Marcus, that is for you individually. Does that apply to you and your descendants? Marcus responds and says, yes, it does, because if I know the Bible and I don't follow the principles and I know to honor my parents and I don't honor them and I am giving a place to the devil and because I am the head of my house, I am open of Satan to my home because of my disobedience and rebellion against the principles of God's words. Corey then says, this is my point. No one who believes in generational curses is able to actually supply a verse. I would love for you all to watch the video I sent and tell me where or if I'm wrong. And then I respond and I say, Corey, I think it's a matter of how you see generational curse. I don't see it the way you imply some of us believe it. And then Marcus says, plus I will sow what I reap. Marcus responds and says, I agree with JP. What do you define as a curse? Corey says, remember the words generational, meaning generations following will suffer because of me and curse, meaning they will be loft and treated that way by God because of my sins. So that's pretty much the end of that conversation. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to drop a like because I did a lot of reading. Now, I spoke to Pastor Pagani and he said he believes in generational curses because of Genesis chapter 3 verse 19 by the sweat of your brow you will eat your bread he says that's still happening today people still die today women still get pregnant today and they feel pain so he says that's a generational curse right a generational curse that impacted all of humankind and this has been his position and it's nothing new we all know that's been his position 
Now, the way I look at generational curses, Pastor Pagani has a point. And I actually did speak to Corey, and he has a lot of good points. I think it's a matter of language. Do I believe God is actively cursing Christians? You're cursed, you're cursed, you're cursed. No. Can God give somebody over to Satan so that their flesh can be destroyed, so they can be saved? Is that a curse? Uh, that's a little ambiguous. So it's a matter of language. Marcus Rogers and I asked Corey what he meant by curse. Corey explained it. Obviously, I think it's important for everybody to define what they mean by generational curse. Now, Corey was very clear. He said, a curse that affects your offspring. And do I see that in the Bible? Not directly. Now, if you define generational curse in the way that I define it, where if I get a sickness for being a fornicator, which I've mentioned, or if I do a particular drug, right? My child and my child's child could end up having those things for a very long time, right? And by that, I mean generations down the line, assuming they survive that long. So that's how I view it. I'm not an expert on this topic. I know Calvinists and a lot of Reformed people say that the fall of Adam and sinful nature is some sort of a curse because the sinful nature has gotten passed down. I don't really take that stance myself, but it's a good conversation to have. Obviously, I spoke to Pastor Pagani and I spoke to Corey, and they both make great points. Obviously, I don't believe God is actively just going around cursing Christians. Now, can God give somebody over to Satan for the sake of them being saved? Yes, is that a curse on their flesh? It's a little ambiguous, but I'll leave you guys with that. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. God bless you guys.